The gig is up, Fred. Osama bin Laden. Oh! Hey, real quick, I just want to be real for a minute. There we go, I'm real now. What up, world? I'm Dumsy, and this is my McDonald's order. Follow me. Here's my quarter pounder with lettuce. That's right, I have a plush toy now. Hey, you with a plushie here. Oh, napkin! Ah! Oh, my ears burn! That's right, I'm real now. Y'all spending 400 on Yeezys? Get off your stock X, bro. There's even words on the mug, dude. Look! This is one high-quality plush you don't want to miss. You look like a good plush. Why, thank you, ma'am. Where can I buy one? Why? On makeshift.com, of course. They're only here for a limited time, so buy one now. Take him to the bar, put them in the jar. This plushie has 4K graphics and 14 times the teraflops. You can listen to Donda with him. You can be an emo gamer girl with him. I don't know. Uh, buy the plush. So you're telling me that making mustard gas violates the Geneva Convention? Yes, absolutely, incredibly illegal. Jesus Christ! I'm back. Dumsy, where the fuck have you been? It's been like over half a year. I was trapped in Kanye's basement. When the fuck? When did you get an eye patch? Don't question it, because questioning things is for pussies. Why not? I think Shut the fuck up. I make money, racks, and I sleep with women. That's a lie, and you know it. I'm joining Lubot. Fuck this. Well, thank God you are, because I don't associate with horses. Well, we've been waiting for you, or at least I have. I think. Anyways, want to watch Fred 2? No! No? Isn't that literally your job? Oh, who do you think I am, Kara? Well, yeah, but you make good content. Ah, uh, debatable. So, a happy Halloween, everyone. Wait, this is a Halloween episode? Well, I mean, uh, why else did we take months to actually do this? Because you overdosed on ibuprofen and Zyrtec. No, 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 like, like the lore reason. Didn't you review both of the sequels with Ellis Mark, you cheating bastard? I don't know who you're talking about. Anyways, Fred 2, Five Fred Nights at Freddy's. Freddy's. It's a sequel to Fred the Movie, and it's a Halloween special. Ooh, that's that's why we waited months, Okay, too. Butters, the bit's over. So apparently Nickelodeon thought the first movie was so good that it deserved a sequel. Two of them. And a TV uh, show. <laughs> at long last. My Fred Multiverse Theory is coming to life. Let's just put the damn thing so in. So our film opens with, what else? The Screaming Banshee himself. My life is a horror movie. It's so scary! No one cares that you're scared. He's just like me, for real, for real. Especially... Abled? Oh, you bet your ass I am. You'll be scared and scarred. Scared. That's a new word I just made First up. First joke of the movie, and it already makes no sense. I'm gonna go get a snack. What the fuck is that one? Bro, he's just crip walking, bro. So Fred explains that he broke up with Judy via a bad green screen and a Casablanca reference. Which, by the way, totally isn't meant to hide the fact that the actress, Pixie Lott, refused to come back for Fred, too. I mean, look at this shot. It's just Fred in a way. Wow, look. Trans Fred. Wait, Butters, is that what trans people are like in real life? No, Dumbsville, but this is what you're like in real hey, life. Hey, flattery will get you nowhere. Did you edit this movie? We did this bit already. Yes or no? Kiss my ass! So Fred gushes over his music teacher or something, who is comedically deaf, only to reveal that one day she disappeared. She probably just got hit by a school bus in the park. Fred is then suddenly molested. Fred is then suddenly jump scared by this guy, who is his new music teacher. I know Ralph already said it, but it's so hard not to look at this guy and think that the screen directions were be as pedophilic as humanly possible. Did it seem like you were kidding? Or so, uh, after that encounter, Fred then talks about how he was stalked by a woman, I guess? Someone followed me! A stalker! Pot calling the kettle black, Fred. Fred finally understands the female plight. Of course, since Fred is a total moron, this woman is, in reality, just walking normally. So Fred runs away anyway, where Fred lands in a kiddie pool and... What? The fuck. Anyways, so it turns out that the music teacher is moving into Fred's block. We then get a funny scream from Fred. Mr. Devlin, the weird new... <laughs> to be fair, he has a right to be afraid. This looks like the kind of girl who believes in rocks. So Fred arrives home. I'm so scared! 
Now do you see what the fuck is this? Did he just freeze frame a cutaway? Can Fred bend space and time to his will? Holy shit, write that down. Cut to Fred meeting up with Bertha, who is now not played by Jeanette McCurdy. How do you boycott a movie that's already out? I must admit, though, she is dripping. She looks just like a Scott Pilgrim fan. You mean you? No, no, no. I look like Obi-Wan, dumbass. Oh, shit. You're supposed to be Obi-Wan? I thought you were fucking Art Garfunkel. What the fuck? He wasn't even the bearded one. So Fred complains to Bertha about the missing music teacher <sighs> until they're approached by the one girl that's stalking him. And the two of them start hitting it off a little too well. This is how I get to school. <laughs> then why have I never seen you walk this way to school then? Because I didn't start this school until this year. Fred, don't Someone date the freshman. No. It's a trap. Cut to music class where we see... Kevin, my favorite. Uh, yeah, we see uh, Kevin singing. And anyone will be ready for the recital. I'm gonna kick some piano butt at the recital. What's that even supposed to mean? It means you should shut up. Shut up! We then have one of Fred's patented imagination scenes, where he duels Kevin in a piano match. Only for us to get back to... I did not edit that, I swear to God. You definitely edited this movie, didn't I, you? I just said I did So anyways, Fred sucks at piano or something, and that's about it. He then whines about how good he is at piano to the woman character or something. And she responds with, I made you a cookie in chemistry class. Yep, that's 100% a weed cookie. It's 100% chemicals. Yep, uh, that's meth. So Fred starts freaking out. What if Tally is a ghost? Ber Bertha saw her. I am a ghost, Fred. Oh, oh, what the fuck is happening? Now I am doomed to walk among. Awesome. Isn't that meme dead? Who gives a shit? Not me. Those shoes are pretty swank. Oh. I will say the humor in this movie is actually an improvement. It's not exactly amazing, but there are more jokes than just screaming. We then meet up with Fred's mom, everyone's favorite character. We're also introduced to Kevin's mom, who is... Holy shit, I just realized that's Flo from Progressive. Holy shit, write that down immediately. Right. Turn the game console off right now. So Fred's invited to Kevin's Halloween party. With that comes a lot of sacrifice, and part of that sacrifice is not getting invited to a lot of parties. <laughs> Why did she say parties like that? Can't tell if she's an amazing actress or a dog shit actress. It's scaring me. It's almost like the actress is just as miserable as the character. So Fred starts freaking out, but thankfully Juan Cena pops out of the fridge. Who apparently, despite the last movie confirming that it wasn't John Cena, Fred still imagines him as John Cena. I do find it funny though that John Cena just lives in Fred's fridge with a bunch of V8, Sunny D, and backwards turn Dasani and Prego so you can't see the label, except for the one Dasani container on the top of the fucking fridge. Anyway, so Fred pulls up and hops out at the after party. Is this what Fred thinks is dressing nice? A suit coat over his regular outfit? So some shit happens at Kevin's Halloween party, including Fred's mom hitting on Mr. Pedo. What a surprise, the prostitute wants to fuck the pedophile. Cut inside to where? Hey. Um, what? Anyways, Fred confronts Kevin That's and completely safe. destroys him. You know, you look like Robert Pattinson <laughs> if he were stupid. Get it? Because Twilight was popular back then. But then Jailbait, I mean Talia, is suddenly at this party. What jailbait? W what do you mean by that? She's trying to lure Fred and then sue him for a statutory violation. I don't think that's... So it's revealed that Talia is actually Kevin's sister. What are you doing talking to my sister? Which leads to screaming. Of course. <laughs> okay, what the fuck? Why is that actually funny? If it weren't for the screaming, the slapstick would actually be pretty well executed. Fred then arrives hey, home girl. and... Next no! Girl. Fuck me, why do we need this shit? So anyways, Fred decides to investigate the teacher. Wait, his alarm is still Judy? Man, Fred, you gotta get over her, bro. So Fred uses the invisibility cloak from the first movie. But it clearly didn't work before. Why would it work now? So Fred spies on Mr. Petta, who apparently can't hear his weird-ass grunts and screams. He then runs inside and thinks the teacher is a murderer who killed his previous teacher. But then, his pancake starts beating and... Welp, it's official. Fred is fucking schizophrenic. So Fred starts throwing around secrets, like the fact that his teacher's an alien. He's an alien, Bertha! We then get a scene where Fred imagines... What the fuck? Ah! Yeah, I don't think we can show that. This film screams, we didn't care, so we went apeshit. Ready to go to class? So, was Fred on the floor for the entire scene? Anyways, so Fred asks Talia why she hasn't existed until now. The answer is retcon. This leads to a flashback where Fred is in some mob cream. God damn. Wow, this is certainly a Nickelodeon film. So, Fred gets Fred zone. I like you, Fred. Let me tell you about a girl that I know. But it turns out she has a crush on him. Because of course she does. Man, how is Fred getting more pussy than me? So anyways, Fred looks at a cereal box. And now thinks that Mr. Petto is a vampire, I guess? Mr. Devlin is a vampire! Thank you for the amazing insight, Fred. Wait, so Mr. Pedo is a Playboy Cardi fan? We then cut to a Twilight reference, because if you couldn't tell, this was a popular movie at the time. Which reminds me, when are you doing the second Twilight movie, Dumsy? I don't know what that is. The gig is up, Fred. <laughs> we have 
get my sister! Yo, Playboy Cardi? Who the fuck are you talking about? Shut up, I'm buying Rick Owens right now. So after a joke from Vampire Suck... What the hell is Vampire Suck? Oh uh, god, I wish I were you. You know what's below my waist? My penis! <laughs> Nobody's laughing! So after that, Fred starts describing vampire weaknesses. They can't see their own reflection, and aside from crosses, they don't like silver, garlic, and most importantly, stock <laughs> images. Most importantly, they cannot come into your house unless you invite them in. Or that, I guess. Unfortunately, it turns out Fred's forced to invite him in since his mom is dating him. So Fred and Bertha stalk them, I guess, on the Fred cycle. Wait, Fred built that? I didn't think he'd fancy himself a carpenter. Maybe Fred was Jesus all along. You could probably afford a lot nicer than this, huh? Actually, I was going to say on a teacher's salary, I usually just eat toast. Did Fred just include social commentary about the teacher's salary? So the two sneak into the kitchen, only for an employee to spot them. You're late. Put this on and get on the grill. Wait, so they just hire him? I wish getting a job was that easy. So Fred starts harassing his fellow employees. Because it's not a Fred movie if he's not randomly harassing people. I can make anything. Good. Oh yeah? What about my sock? That looks like it's covered in piss, shit, cum, cum, cum piss. <laughs> Meanwhile, Bertha is in disguise as a waitress. Where she got her disguise is beyond me, but it turns out the pedo might be a vampire all along, dropping extremely on-the-nose hints. Extra, extra rare. Bloody. And, uh, hold the garlic fries, please. I guess I sucked the out of those kids. So as Fred is presenting his sock, Bertha tells Fred about the teacher's supposed plan to suck the life out of these kids. The writers had to know what they were doing. So they go back home, I guess, and Fred's mom, I guess, acts like she just watched Cruella and enjoyed it. Which, to be fair, you have to be like Fred's mom to actually enjoy Cruella. He's a nice man, Freddy. He's very interested in you. I swear, these pedophile jokes write themselves. So Fred continues to stalk his teacher, only to see him with a bloody apron and a knife. I guess he really was the imposter. Fred then falls out the window and meets up with John Cena again. We then get an entire wrestling match where Fred and John Cena fight Kevin and the pedophile teacher. If there's one thing you can't say about this movie, it's that it isn't bad shit insane. They're vampires, son. Wait, they're vampires now? Does that mean Kevin's a vampire? What was this established? I love how he also considers biting people on their neck to be too gay for him. Disgusting. The other vampires would think we're dating. So Fred then wakes up back in his bed, as per usual, he then goes back to bed and wakes up for school the next morning, complaining to Bertha again, only for the teacher to encounter him for some blood. I'm going to need some of your blood. But it turns out that it's only for the blood drive. What a goopy misunderstanding. I feel great. Well. You look terrible. Yeah, well, I look better than you! Did, did Kevin just get his feelings hurt by Fred? Anyways, Fred complains to Talia about an upcoming recital. I want to show you something. I made these hand puppets. Um, excuse me? Okay, well, there's no way to defend that. Nah, she's just being a Gemini. She's a little quirky. I like you, Fred. I'm not sure I'm ready to say how I feel about you yet, Talia. She's literally trying to bait him. You know, this is how I actually hit on women. I call it Game Dude style. How well has that been working out for you? Well, I'm dating this girl named Restraining Order. I think she's French. She sounds lovely. Like 90 days in prison lovely. Hurry up, Mr. Devlin is waiting! So Fred arrives home and... Talia is under his spell, too! Apparently thinks she's under a spell. But then John Cena comes out. Ah, clearly he's playing Call of Duty Vanguard. So Taiwan Cena talks about, You gotta suck his blood! Wait, damn. Suck his blood before he sucks yours! Damn, John Cena's kind of a freak. It's turning uh, on. Shut the fuck up. Was this even, like, in the script? I feel like John Cena was improvising this. Imagine the deleted cuts, god damn. So Fred goes over to Bertha's, but it turns out that Mr. Petto is helping her practice on her MIDI keyboard. She's very talented. I'm helping her learn Certified Lover Boy, or as I call it back home, Certified Boy. Boy lover. So Fred freaks out and realizes he has to fight his teacher on his own. I'll need a cross. So he grabs a cross sign, only to be encountered by Durf? Holy shit, Fred's Tyler Durden. Just a shame he's not uh, important to the plot. So Fred enters a Chinese restaurant, and finally it's time for some good old family friendly racism. So he orders some garlic sauce, scares the employees, and leaves, and that's about it. Fred then grabs some water guns in order to prepare for the vampire hunting, but not before we get a hilarious fourth wall break. Why are you talking like that? Are you pretending you're in a movie or something? <laughs> <laughs> so now it's the big night. So Fred walks in and no Russians the teacher. I am so sorry. He hasn't been himself since the day he was born. Not gonna lie. That's an amazing line. Good job, Fred, too. You had better dialogue than insert topical modern movie here. Everybody stay where you are. The gig is up, Fred. But it turns out, as per Fred movie tradition, this is just all a dream sequence, followed by an epic, Fred embarrassing Fred failure, Fred where Fred just sprays Fred random Fred people. Why doesn't he spray the threat first? Because then it wouldn't be an epic, epic fail. fail. Don't worry, Talia. 
Yeah, I'm here to protect you. So Fred's mom's all like, you're a failure, Fred. And Talia's mad at him the next day to boot. Wow, why is the woman I sprayed garlic sauce with mad at me? Why would she be scared, Bertha? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because a crazy person sprayed garlic in her face yesterday. Oh my gammon, who did that? I swear, Fred has some advanced <laughs> form of autism. Fred then gets bullied by Kevin, I guess. But then Mr. Pedo Teacher is just standing on the, the staircase. Law. And he's all like, You obviously have the wrong impression of me. I'm a child well, groomer, not a vampire. So he invites Fred to dinner. So we get Fred screaming as per usual. At this point, I'm honestly numb to it. So Fred's going to use this moment to expose Mr. Devlin. And I'm bringing a secret weapon with me. This. An iPhone? Wow, basic modern technology. What a secret weapon. So apparently Fred plans to put up a live stream on YouTube touring his teacher's house. Wow, I can't believe this film predicted YouTube live streaming. tries any. The whole world will see it on the website! Or just call 911. Also, Bluetooth? Did they lose the rights to YouTube that they had in the first movie? So Fred arrives at the teacher's house, and he's playing on a pure red piano, which I need right now. Welcome to my home. Please remove all articles of clothing. My SpongeBob retrospective is in the kitchen. So Fred starts streaming, and he's gaining traction, with even Kevin getting interested for Audio some Audio reason. Audio. You gotta watch Figglehorn's website right now, man. Wait, so Fred has a whole website. So, like, is Fred already E-famous? You'd think he would wouldn't be bullied nearly as much if he was proving himself to be more successful. What? Ah! You're playing my chemical romance! Nicole, you know I'm scared of emo! Fred then gets freaked out and stumbles into a strangely easily accessible secret room. Is this another dream sequence? Holy shit, better question. Is that the hall between the sets? You can literally see the crates and the stage lights and everything. Did they really get that lazy? Mr. Pedo then finds Fred in his $10 whatever the fuck this is Halloween costume. I thought this was just how all pedophiles dress. Look, he's even got the katana collection. Definitely a pedophile. Fred then drops his phone in this pot, ending the stream. But turns out, it's all one massive misunderstanding. Man, I could have never predicted this throughout the entire movie. So why are you so interested in Korean food? Because, Fred, I'm a pedophile. We a food. And you know what? Call me crazy, but this teacher's backstory is genuinely interesting, and the way he bonds with Fred is really heartwarming. There's even a part where they bond over their absent fathers and their love for music. Did you ever miss your dad when you were growing up? A lot. Yeah, I really miss my dad. You see, that moment's way better than it has any right to be. I really like this scene. It's really good. Are you really praising Fred too right now? You know what? Yeah, I think I am. So the next day, Fred comes to school and is praised for his epic live stream. It's also revealed that Mr. Petto was fired, all due to Fred. So Fred runs back to Mr. Petto's house, only to be locked out and for his video to be discovered by the teacher himself. <laughs> I know it's Plenty Poggers. I do the. Fred then runs home and feels bad for doing the bad things that he did. Wowzer copter! Is that how many hits are on my website? So Fred predicted commentary then? Wait, only 1,400 views? That's barely anything. That's gotta be like five cents in ad revenue. You would also think that live footage of a teacher being ousted as a threat to students would have a little more coverage than 1,200 views. So after kicking out the teacher, Dead Poet Society style, Fred decides to. I'm going to convince everyone that I'm a vampire, so they're mad. Yeah, that. This leads to a shitty montage, just like the first movie, where Fred and Bertha do some weird shit. People making this really couldn't help themselves to not retread old ground. Talia then re-enters the movie, I guess. Who I'm just now realizing is a completely pointless character. Who actively ruins any potential this movie does have. Like, wouldn't it be kind of cool if this movie were about Fred and Bertha's relationship? That would actually be a really cool straight line You're from- You're giving this movie too much credit. Stop Everybody's it. Everybody's weird. There's just some people who like to act like they're normal. Some people just wanna be jonker. Meanwhile, we cut to Kevin watching mariachi. What the fuck is this dude into? Meanwhile, at Fred's place again. Are you Fred's girlfriend? I'm a girl, and I'm Fred's friend. Fuck, dude, they're I'm toying with us. Go write your Fred fanfiction. Give it back! This isn't right, that was ours! How do I look? Like a Fredophile. So, a uh, long story short, they lure Kevin and his boys into thinking his sister is kidnapped by a vampire. Devlin is going down. So everyone starts gearing up, and Fred gets ready to prank Kevin. Did Fred just say shit? So Kevin and the crew approach Mr. Petto and threaten him, only for Bertha to reveal the real vampire. There's no such thing as vampires. Yes, there is. But it's not Devlin. It's Play Never too much. Never too much. Take this take and just... Drive it into Fred's heart! Don't murder Fred, please. I can't stand him anymore. Come. 
So Kevin stabs Fred and holy shit! Holy shit, Kevin committed a homicide. So after jump scaring Kevin like Golden Freddy, they save the day, I think. All while the teacher was watching them. I'm going to do you, Freddy boy. You know, this is how Drake would say goodbye. I've saved Mr. Devlin's career, and now I can sleep the sleep of the just. The what? And how will that save Mr. Pedo's career? Wasn't it established that him being a creep was the reason he was kicked out? Well, at least Taiwan isn't a real country Cena is happy for him. But it turns out the teacher actually quit the whole time. What a convenient and obligatory happy ending. Oh, I didn't get fired, Fred. I quit. But alas, because he is moving out, this is also an emotional ending. I'm going to miss you, Mr. Devlin. I'm going to miss you too, Fred. How is about one more Cosmodor special for the road? So anyways, Fred and Bertha walk home with the day saved, I think, and the verdict's still out in the air with that one. It turns out Fred's not dating Talia, I guess. I don't really think there's a future there. Well, at least Fred's learning. I need a woman who's going to challenge me a little more. Clearly the editor didn't, but why the fuck would you want to fuck Fred anyways? Seems like a massive swing and a mess. That's implying there was a swing in the first place. Anyways, so Fred's mom and Mr. Petto go out one last time, I guess. But as Mr. Petto leaves, his reflection is into the mirror. <laughs> in the movie ends. Well, that was Fred too. And to call me crazy, but there's stuff I liked more than the first movie. As well as stuff I really hated more than the first movie. Like the fact that it was a Fred movie? Well, Fred movie or not, Mr. Devlin may be a really creepy character, but the chemistry between him and Fred, especially in this scene, is really heartwarming. Plus, while the weirder scenes are really weird and out of place, there are times when they are genuinely funny, and the humor is overall a slight improvement. A slight one, though. I didn't say it was funny. funny. I mean, overall, it's still an obnoxious Fred movie with a bland story, horrible editing, and whatever the fuck Talia was supposed to be. Overall, it's certainly a sequel to Fred the Movie. So, Butters, what did you think? Despair. I'd watch it as a bad Halloween movie, but, like, this movie wasn't that good. But I I couldn't watch the first Fred movie again, mostly just because it was that bad. I'd probably cut this movie short like 20 minutes early. <laughs> well, now that that's over, I'm guessing we need to have some elaborate Halloweens get to go along with- Nope, I'm leaving. Oh. Goodbye. Oh, wait. wait. You built all this lore for that? Yep, goodbye. You could have at least fixed the hole in my wall.